Hello, my atrocious agnostic aardvarks. Welcome back to J Mick. My name is Jack the Snack. That smiles back. It is the ATARS times, the times where we find the butts of the internet and laugh at their butty misery. Emily's back here. Say hello, my favorite butt. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Hello. Okay, let's go. First story, am I the a-hole telling my daughter it's her own fault she missed out on her dream college? When my daughter Mary was a senior, only a little into the school year, she passed out in the kitchen. Conveniently, after I went to work and while her father was still asleep, her usual time to get sick, he never heard any bang. I use air quotes only because Mary has always been very dramatic and thrived off attention. At one point, we debated getting her checked for some sort of disorder, but ultimately decided not to because she was skilled at manipulating doctors to believe her lies even as a child. Okay. You wouldn't believe the diagnosis, clearly. Example, at six, Mary had this whole imaginary friend that when her father and I confronted her, she admitted was made up. We pulled her from therapy then. I think you probably should have kept her in. During all her school years, she was a terror. We were constantly embarrassed in the guidance counselor's office, pleading our case as parents doing our best. She didn't turn in her homework, she had behavioral problems, she was sick more than anyone I've ever known to be. But back to the concussion. Immediately after the incident, Mary planted herself face down on the couch and texted me, apparently screens didn't bother her too much then, that she hit her head. I kept asking what happened and she said she didn't know. I called her and she kept saying the same thing, that her head hurt. She stayed on the couch until the bus came and went. When her father got up and saw her there, he ended up taking her to the doctor at first available appointment where she was diagnosed with a concussion. It lasted past Christmas. She was cleared to go back in November, but only for half days. But we both worked until 4 p.m. or later. While I tried to get her to try and going back for full days, she gave up and claimed it hurt too much. So we let her stay home to heal. Well, as you can imagine, with less than half the time of the other kids, Mary's academic su success was bottom of the barrel. Plus, she had to drop out of her AP courses, being too far behind. Add in the fact she slacked and slept entire days away while sick constantly and her college pickings were slim. We doubted she would get many acceptances, honestly, but she did manage a scholarship to her dream college that halved the costs. She'd never mentioned it before. Ugh, well, she never mentioned this. You should be proud of her that she still got a scholarship, not this whole, ah, oh, well, she didn't deserve it in my opinion. She didn't tell us that we wouldn't be paying for a whole college experience. How dare she save us tens of thousands of dollars? That selfish brat. <laughs> we got as far as orientation before we realized even with the scholarship and financial aid, we couldn't do the cost. I did my best and brought her to the bank for a loan, but she couldn't get what she needed. She has never forgiven us, constantly claiming that we should have saved more rather than she should have applied herself or managed her time better to get a job. I told her she brought this on herself, that we warned her this would happen, and that she could have put in more effort. I said, every assignment you never turned in is a dollar you peed away. How is a school assignment got to do with income? That doesn't determine your income. So many people can vouch for the fact that doing good in school does not vouch for a good income. She hasn't spoken to us since, and she's ignored every time I or her father tries to reach out. So that's the story. I'm thinking, and not just the edit bits alone. So uh, let's go with the top comment, though. Top comment! Yep, top comment, because Em was very keen to read this bit. You're the a-hole. Holy Hannah, do you even like your child? The language used is mind-boggling. One, imaginary friend to the young age is 100% normal. Yes, oh, uh, that's what really confused me, too. Did you ever consider she admitted they were real because you put her in therapy over it? I would bet dollars you belittled her over it, too. Yeah, by the way she worded it, Absolutely. Two, a real doctor diagnosed her with a concussion, a very serious one by the details provided. Your language implies you belittled that too. Three, despite a severe concussion and missing school, she still managed grades that qualified for darn good scholarship to what sounds like a very expensive school. You blame her over this. Four, something doesn't add up. Despite a 50% scholarship and par, there wasn't enough money to go. There are grants if you are low income. There are work programs to help with extra costs. There are a ton of things to help. You said you tried to get a bank loan. Based on your overall language and blaming her for not doing more, I doubt you gave a ton of effort into trying to make it happen. 
Okay, so I'm going to say when it came to getting the bank loan, I reckon they forced the daughter to apply it with her own income and her own like financial status. Oh, 100%. I bet. So that is the story. Let's go to these updates though. First, edit to add, she was put in therapy because she started acting out after moving states, not because of the imaginary friend. The point is that she never had an imaginary friend until the therapist asked us about said friend and we confronted Mary about it. She admitted to making it up then. Okay, that doesn't add any defense to you whatsoever. But moving on to the second edit now, this one's the gold mine. Not sure where everyone is getting the narrative that I ever mentioned anything about an eating disorder. That never happened. Nor do I understand how it's hard to understand that we pulled her from therapy for lying to her therapist that she had an imaginary friend. She... What? She's okay. six years old. Okay. What did you expect from a six year old? Okay, so what I'm trying to, what I'm interpreting here is that what the tale is, is that she pretended having a pretend friend for the sake of the therapist. Though I wonder, is that actually the case? Or was it her just admitting to her parents that she knows the imaginary friend isn't real, but it was just her coping mechanism, like her, her way to cope with her situation. You know, I've lost my friends because we moved, so I'm going to make an imaginary friend that I get to be with because I don't have any friends here. She uses it as her debate that the daughter can twist doctors around her finger. She was six years old talking about an imaginary friend, and that's your basis for saying that she can twist doctors into believing whatever she wants and getting whatever she wants. She was... She was six. <laughs> she was a little kid. <laughs> On to the next bit. My daughter is 24 now. The concussion and graduation was years ago. The argument was around a week ago. I see people calling me tiger mom. If it makes me a tiger mom to expect my daughter do and turn in her work and keep up with her classes, sure. But also, we're white. <laughs> <laughs> Just gotta put that in there, guys. Nobody cares about the whites. The men with my family struggling. Oh, nobody cares. It's always, it's always the other people they care about, but the ones the whites are in trouble. Oh, no one cares. Oh, I love South Park. I'm also disgusted by everyone saying I hate my daughter. She is the light of my life. I gave up everything for her happily. I moved because she deserved better opportunities in ma than in ns, leaving behind my parents that we both loved. I'm frustrated. Yes. And I'm not perfect, but she is my first and only baby. I've loved her since I first found out I was pregnant, since I first met her, felt her. Yes, I'm frustrated, incredibly frustrated. I grew tired of being the bad guy and having my love be spat in my face. And when she moved out, I got tired of her spinning the narrative to strangers and family alike. This may show in my response as dripping with content. We never placed her in therapy again. No, and not just for her lying to a childhood therapist. It was her aggressive behavior, threatening other students and screaming, but then immediately playing nice to the teachers when confronted. It was her lying to guidance counselors and teachers through the years. One time she broke down crying, telling a teacher that she didn't want to go home all because the teacher had called me that she tore up another student's work, aka she was going to be punished. It was the constant hypochondria. She was constantly sick and throwing up, but rarely in front of us, and she rarely had a quantifiable fever over 100. Mary would go to extreme, illogical lengths to get what she wanted, and we were the ones who were hurt in her efforts. Constantly called into meetings with the schools, taken aside by doctors, family, friends, asking if Mary was, you know, Okay, she's not depressed or autistic, nor does she have anxiety, ADD, or ADHD, or any other disorder. Sure. If you autistic. haven't taken her back to a doctor, how do you know? These traits are either someone who's, I mean, look, yeah, look, I'm, I am getting kind of skeptical on the daughter's innocence here with this history, but of course this is this mom's perspective and she's given herself a really bad start with the original story. Uh, anyway, I'm not arguing against any judgments, but she had a happy childhood. Lots of love, affection, attention. She she was an only child for Christ's sake. Support. Maybe not in the form that she wanted, but still lots of support. Just because she didn't want the kind of support she got doesn't mean it wasn't there. There was no reason for her to be depressed. Child Protective Services even investigated the home and found there was no abuse. Case closed. I'm not an abuser. I'm a tired mom who did everything she could. The argument from last week which started this post was because I asked her what she was doing for school these days as she is 24 and still hasn't finished the degree. In turn, she completely blew up on me in a similar fashion as some of these comments. Okay, so what are your thoughts on that then? I mean, you can say she's not depressed as, as much as you want. 
but you'd probably never actually spoke to your daughter in a sense that would give her a safe feeling to talk to you about those sorts of things. Mm-hmm. And oh, she had no money, so she obviously couldn't take herself to therapy. Yeah, I think that's the thing here too, is like this mother is basing her judgments and her behavior towards the daughter based on her childhood, like antics and history. Like how long ago was she uh, tearing up another student's work? How long ago was she crying about that? Was that in like what, primary school? And she's in her like late teens, early twenties now with this college stuff? She's mid twenties now. Yeah, that, that that's a different person. If it isn't, then I'm sorry, you have failed in some degree as a parent if that child is still acting the same way they did as a little kid. And you can't just constantly put love and support on someone in a way that you think is right. And be like, well, she didn't accept it and we're not changing our ways. Clearly, mum, your ideas and intentions of love and support aren't actually healthy and clearly weren't the best tactic to raising your daughter. Uh, And I think the sooner you change your tone, the better you're going to have a relationship with your daughter before she does the old swing of the bat and boom, into the retirement home you go with no support. That was such a long story. Yeah, for minutes. such I a know. small question. <laughs> like, what was the question? Next story. Am I the a-hole for being honest and blocking my ex? So, I, female 22, was recently contacted by my ex, who's a male 23. We were recently amicable until he texted me a few days ago. The conversation was already off to a bad start. Just thinking about it deeply triggers me. So, here's the conversation. Uh, everything's been blurred out for us. Lovely. Did you ever come up with the idea that I hit you? Because it's finally coming around to haunt me and I've asked everyone how this came to be, but it leads all back to you. Please, just be honest and let's fix it. Because I know that's not true at all. I more, I hurt you emotionally, but physically, that's a whole other story. Ooh, okay. You didn't hit me, but you yelled at me and pushed me around a little. I don't know if it counts. Well, can you recall a time? Because you told me Caesar did that to you. Caesar abused me, but he used to grip me really hard. Mainly when I was around you, Cisco, and your other friend. So I can explain myself or make sense out of them? I'm not sure if you knew at the time, but I was pretty upset when you had it with me without a condom first and then put it on later. That's called stealthing and that's screwed up. Okay, I thought we truly talked about it, but I can say I'm truly scared to have a kid. That experience I had with you wasn't fair at all. That's why I didn't feel like it was a healthy relationship, mostly because of me. Okay, so you're admitting it, that you're a problem. That's good. It's a start. No, we didn't really talk about it since you didn't understand why it was wrong. Your words were, I really feel like I killed somebody. I'm sorry. This whole time I thought it was me. I really did the most for you and sometimes I regret it because I feel like you took something from me. Anyway. That's that. Okay. So, despite me being honest, the conversation didn't end there. He continually tried to gaslight me, saying that he never did any of that. He's in a local band that's semi-popular, so he's worried about defamation. He tried to deflect, saying that he never did any of that and that I was making it all up. To which, then, I exploded on him. He only wanted me to tell whoever he heard it from that he didn't hit me. I agreed. But then, I said that I would be honest about my experiences should they ask, to which in turn he freaked out about. I mentioned to him that not only did he do that, but he stealthed me during our relationship. Now granted, it was only once from my memory, but that doesn't change the fact that stealthing is, well, great. He only continued to say that I was a liar, and that none of it ever happened. Now I think I might be the a-hole because I kept blowing up on him, and trying to tell him why it was wrong to gaslight and disagree instead of trying to come to an understanding. But am I the a-hole for being honest to him? Like, okay, points to the guy for acknowledging that he was bad in the relationship and that kind of stuff. But Um, was it acknowledging trying to make you comfortable so he can lure you back in? Yeah, like... Like, oh, babe, I know I fucked up. I'll change. She has every right to be honest about it, dude. You screwed up. This is part of your history. You've got to... The only thing you can rightfully do here is do what you can to prove your a better person now. You've even proved from this. This isn't who you are now. People are going to make up their own opinions about you regardless. Uh, This whole fear of defamation. Yeah, okay, I get it. You've got some sort of uh, thing that's on the line here. But again, you shouldn't have done it in the first place. You don't want to be considered a thief. Don't steal in the first place. Uh, Yeah, that is absolutely Natard. 
Nata? Nata? Am I the a-hole for telling my stay-at-home mother wife that I can't wake up on to care for our baby on work nights? My wife and I have a great relationship. Yeah, so far. Very open communication and willingness to help the other. Uh, I'm sure. This is a unique situation, Emily, where we're both a bit frustrated. My wife stays at home to take care of our one beautiful baby son. I work 45 to 50 hour weeks and need to get up uh, by 6.30 a.m. I also have a diagnosed genetic health condition that is kind of scary and leaves me more fatigued than most people. I struggle with fatiguing events like losing lots of sleep. So when I wake up in the night to care for our crying baby, it makes my work days especially difficult. However, I love my wife and make sure to take care of our child on weekend nights. I choose not to sleep in and care for our baby so that my wife can get extra sleep. This also applies to days I have off, like holidays. I don't feel this two out of seven plus days off structure is unfair because I need to be up early and alert at work. I understand that she needs to be awake to tend to our baby, but she can also take naps when our baby does. I have no such privilege. I also help take care of the baby at night like any good father would. I just can't do waking up in the middle of the night when I work. Am I the a-hole? I feel like there needs to be more info here. I need to know what the mother is struggling with as well. Yeah, there's no, there's nothing from her point of view. So it's yeah. like if you had a conversation about this and you both accept it, then cool. Like when does like, she get a break? The, the only reason why they think they might be the a-hole is my wife makes me. Uh, my wife wants me to wake up on work nights. One, not waking up at nights on work nights. What? That, that, <laughs> that doesn't explain why you might be the a-hole. Okay, take, let's do the top comment. Let's see what people are saying. I'm leaning towards your tar. Your wife doesn't get time off. She's on call 24-7, especially if she's breastfeeding. Why not take shifts during some nights? That way, each person can have a guaranteed amount of sleep and it can be more fair. Now, e editing to change this to a hard guitar. OP said in another comment that they both have day jobs. So she's not a stay at home. Th so he's lied. Just contain that a little bit and keep reading. His poor wife works and does nearly all the childcare. That isn't sustainable. I guess I have to edit this again because OP clarified that by day job, he meant taking care of the baby. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> it's an emotional roller coaster. Rain it in. <laughs> Soft guitar final verdict. Y'all can't stop commenting that I'm wrong now. <laughs> okay, yeah. Mm. He has a condition that requires him to have a healthy amount of sleep. But, but at the same time, I mean, you had a kid. You gotta understand that this is a sort of a responsibility you've got to take on board um, together as a couple. If he isn't giving her the weekends to just be away from the child, you know, to be her days off. Absolute guitar. Like, she should have a chance to be away from the child at some point. If it's her job, she should have days off too. Huh. I mean, you guys had a kid. I don't know what you expected. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think it just seems about a thing where if you see your partner is being frustrated by this and exhausted by this, offer to help out. And I'm sure she'd be happy to help you at some point when things are getting a bit too much for you. That is going to end the stories for now today. Thank you so much for watching. You've been amazing. Look at you watching me ramble. If there's any stuff out there that you yourself uh, would love to see me check out, then you know, let me know in the comments below. Love to know what you guys are into watching us look at together. But otherwise, thank you once again for watching. Uh, Emily, say goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. And I uh, will see you in the next video. See ya.